Hello, and welcome back to QPG time, where we're very professional and we know what we're doing, and we even have teacups that are off site because we've got a very exciting and very physical interview today. Um, in case you've forgotten, I don't know how you would have, but I'm Rosie, and I am really, really excited to be joined by my second guest for QPT time, Dan Power. Dan, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so I want to start um, by fangirling a bit because we had a bit of a chat yesterday before coming here and I googled you after that oh, really? and I was like <laughs> oh my god there's a legit celebrity living in Geraldton <laughs> um, and there's obviously like a few more um, people sort of hiding out I'm gonna find them mm. through this interview process um, I just I find it astounding that someone as accomplished as you lives in Geraldton and I think this is always a thing like we meet these amazing people and we want to know like why are you here in Geraldton how how come you're in this beautiful but <laughs> small town in Midwest WA okay so uh, the main reason that I came home um, I'm originally from here yeah um, but I came home to look after my mum who's who's aging and she's um, physically her body's not coping as well as it should be yeah and so I'm here to be her arms and legs oh. um, in the later part of her life so that's a really yeah. beautiful way of saying that, like <laughs> caring for someone and being their arms and legs. Yeah. I wish I had like other arms at the moment. I've, yeah. I've been working out a lot, so they're very sore. Oh, very nice, <laughs> very nice. Yeah, my mum's a, um, a, a, a little person, a dwarf. Yeah, right. So, um, yeah, so her arms and legs are not working so great anymore. Yeah. Good on you. Well, she's very lucky to have arms and legs as strong as yours. Yeah, well, that's why I joke with her. And I'm like, oh, I've got long <laughs> arms and legs, so it's all good. You're very helpful. <laughs> so you're from Geraldton? Yes, I am. Born, my whole here. born and bred here. My whole wow. family's here. My extended family's here. Yeah. Um, my brother is raising a family down in Perth. Yeah. But um, besides that, yeah, everyone's here. Wow. Yeah. So when you, when you were a kid in Geraldton, what was it like? Mm -hmm. um, so I went to... St John's Primary School um, when I was really young, and then later on to Nagel. Yeah. And it was it was great growing up here. You could play in the streets until the street lights came on, and then time to go home. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was it was great. Yeah. It was safe and perfect place to raise children as yeah. it is now. Um, yeah, it's just wonderful. The weather's great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is so good. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Do you think it's changed a lot since you were a kid? I think Geraldton's changed a fair bit, um, but it's only been changing the way society has been changing as mm. well. I came home and it's still uh, a quiet, safe place, but people's attitudes is is of the common, oh, we can't let the kids play on the roads yeah, or anything yeah. like that because it's dangerous and stranger danger might get them and things yeah. like that. But um, yeah, for me, it feels very safe here. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's beautiful. And I think like so often on social media, we see people saying that, you know, Geraldton's this horrible place. Mm. And so it's really nice, you know, mm. for someone on social media to be <laughs> saying that, it, it, you know, that it does still feel like that. Yeah. And I mean, for someone who's grown up in a place like Geraldton, you know, you can see those changes happening. Oh, definitely. And you were here, you were here through high school as well. Through high school. Um, yeah. I auditioned for um, my university degree. Um, at the circus school in year 12 yeah uh, so yeah I did all of my education here yeah. and then left yeah um, yeah so we've kind of like danced around it so far and that that's <laughs> definitely a pun for when we'll talk about the fact <laughs> that you've danced as well um, but we've danced around the fact that there are some hula hoops here oh, very mm, exciting very and there nice. is some more equipment just like off out of the shot um, but you just mentioned circus so it's a great segue into yep. that so you you have a bit of that background which we'll be talking about and when i say a bit of background i obviously mean you're like a huge celebrity internationally <laughs> <laughs> um but how did you start like how did you start getting uh, into so i actually started here in Geraldton, yeah. um dancing at kerry's Potavi coast dance center yeah, um, right. doing acrobatic dance and jazz and tap and all of the styles that she offers yeah um she was a great support to me and still is um i i still teach there yeah. once a week so She's a she's been a wonderful inspiration and a, a great mentor in my life. So um, she actually is the one who guided me onto the path of uh, the circus school at yeah. the during year twelve. She said there's an audition. Uh, she found a, a tiny little article in the West Australian asking for auditions wow. for the first intake of of uh, the three year bachelor program yeah. in Melbourne um, through Swinburne University. 
Right. And so, yeah, that's what I did. I travelled down to Perth and, yeah, did that. Went into the big wide world. Went into the big wide <laughs> world, was um, accepted. One of only 25 students accepted nation nationally. Wow. Um, and that's... Yeah, that That's was sort of the how start it all of it took all. off. Now these hula hoops, they're like they're the centre stage, so yeah, they, they want to keep moving. They and really want to get away from us, but no, nah, they're ready to. They just they're ready to be like hula. Oh yes, do is you that want me to show you some hula? <gasps> yeah, I think it's yeah. like this is this okay. is a good time. Okay, I'll just move the seat back and uh, we awesome. can do a little. We have little so many hula. of these planned. I'm so excited. Okay, so we can. I'll do a little separation, maybe. It mm -hmm. might work. Do it. No, oh. oh, there we go. Oh <laughs> I don't know, like I have just like never been able to get a hula hoop, like even to stay on my body for more than a second. So like, what is it? Like, what is it about that? Like, how, what is the movement in your body that gets? Ah, uh, so um, the movement, as the hoop goes around your body, you push against the hoop. Wherever the hoop goes, ah. you push against it. Yeah. So in fast motion, it's kind of hard to see but I'm actually making little circles with my waist. Yeah, and you're going the same direction as the hoop. Yeah. Oh. And I can take it down. <laughs> Oop. I mean... If I move the chair a little bit more. What? Oh, almost. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just like that. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, like, you're, this is this is very like subprime conditions for ho hooping. I believe that's the uh, yes, that's the professional technical. <laughs> wow! And so, like, is this like is this the kind of thing that got you interested in? You know, in um, or how how did you get interested in circus from dance? Like, is it really closely related? Yeah. Well, I was um, an acrobatic dancer, so yeah, I did okay. a lot of tumbling and right. stretching and contortion and handstands and things. Yeah as a dancer, so um, it was a really easy segue. So there's a lot of tumbling and things in circus. So. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so, so we'll skip forward a little bit. So you, it, it, in year 12, you tried out for mm -hmm. the so NICA. And what yep. does NICA stand for? The National Institute of Circus Arts. Right, okay. And you were in the first full intake, intake is that yep. right? Yeah. Yep. So you actually have a bachelor's degree. I do. And yep. what, is, what is it in? Um, so my major was aerial contortion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I hang by two strips of fabric. It's my main specialty. Yeah. Um, and I tie myself up and unravel. Yeah, yeah. And so I tumble down. Right. Yeah, I have seen that. Yeah, and have always yeah. thought I could never do it. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, <laughs> it's technique more than anything else. Yeah. Um, I I believe that almost anyone can do it. Yeah. If they have the right technique. Yeah. Yeah. So. And so, like you, you start off. Um, just as this like, acrobatic dancer, you yep. go to NICA yep. to start studying for your yep. bachelor's degree. Yep. What are the skills that you develop at NICA in order so to become a performer? I had never done anything aerial um, yeah. and for it to end up being my major yeah. and such a huge part of my life um, is, is pretty phenomenal because in those three years I studied 40 hours a week, one-on-one um, -on -one with a trainer uh, of four different specialties uh, we were offered. Yeah. And three of those specialties were aerial based for me. And right. one was contortion on yeah. the ground, handstands contortion. Yeah. So um, that was pretty epic yeah. on the body. <laughs> yeah. So I learnt, I learnt a great um, volume yeah. of aerial applications in those three years. And so outside of the study that you're doing and, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, we probably don't have hours to explain <laughs> how you do all that kind of stuff, but how do you develop that, those, that strength and the sort of stamina you need to do that? Is it part of your study or is it something completely separate? Um, no, it's part of the study. Yeah. Um, getting enough rest and eating well was important. Yeah. Uh, I also, you know, as a student, you also have to pay your rent and stuff. So I was also working... Um, quite a bit. I was working two other jobs as well as studying 40 hours. Wow. So I was only sleeping about <laughs> four hours a night at one point. Um, 
because I was working nightclub work as well. So um, that was kind of a hard time. Yeah. But being young and fresh and yeah. whatnot, you just do it. And I look back and I go, wow, my God, I could never do that these days. <laughs> you know, I'd just be like a, a zombie or yeah. something. If I don't get a solid like eight hours sleep, mm. don't talk to me. That's, my point. that's me now <laughs> as well. I'm like eight to 12, I'm all good. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, back then it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, four. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> wow. But yeah. And so like you're, you're working two jobs and mm. you're studying 40 hours a week. Mm. And I want to ask you a bit about, you know, how you even manage to find time to audition for Cirque du Soleil amongst doing all of that. Yeah. How? So that was really lucky um, at, at university at the time at circus school. We were in production um, for a show. So we were uh, rehearsing a show that was coming up and audition was on a Saturday. So my acrobatic partner and I, we, we decided to audition. Yeah. Um, funnily, against the uh, advice of the circus school. Really? Because they believed that we weren't quite ready yet. Right, okay. So, um, but we did it anyway. Yeah, because you're young and you think you can do whatever you want. Exactly, yeah. so we, we just did it, um, just to experience what an audition was like. I had no, ex no expectations of being accepted at that time. I just wanted to know what it would be like to it, to uh, audition for a company that large. Yep. And um, surprisingly for me, we both were accepted wow. for the same role in the same show yep. in, in Las Vegas. And how, how old were you? Uh, just, just about 21. I was turning wow. 21 that year. I wasn't quite 21, but... Wow. Yeah. And so like for a kid, you know, a kid from Jero mm. and you're 21 and you've just sort of you know, made your way to Melbourne, you know, doing all of this. Yep. Had you been overseas? I'd never <laughs> been overseas. When I went to Melbourne, I'd never been out of WA really. Wow. So um, that was a big, big step for me. Yeah. Um, and then when I was accepted to uh, <coughs> Cirque du Soleil, that was huge because yeah. that was going to be from Melbourne to Montreal. We lived in Montreal at the headquarters for a little while, yeah. training and rehearsing. Yeah. And then we were shipped to um, Las Vegas. Yeah, right. And that's where we stayed for three years. And so like, I mean, what did your mum think in this time? Uh, once she realised what exactly uh, contemporary circus was and what I'd be doing, she was happy. But when she first heard, you know, circus, she thought, you know, ringside and... Yeah, <laughs> and the kind of stereotype. And vaudeville and, yep. and yeah, yeah. sideshow and that kind of thing. And yep. she was like, no, nah, you're not doing that, no, nah. yeah. no. Nah. But um, once she saw that it was more contemporary and yeah. and the artwork behind what I was doing, then she was very accepting and yeah. it's been a great support. My whole family has actually. So yeah. yeah. And did you, like, did you find it hard to leave? Well, I mean, you'd already um, left Geraldton, but did you I find it hard to leave Australia? Uh, I put on a brave front, I remember. <laughs> I remember going, oh, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then going behind the, the international screen, you know, where you have to go. Yeah. You say goodbye to everyone, you go behind the screen, you fill out your dec declaration of, yeah. you know, where you're going. It's and real. Then it became yeah. really real and I was like sobbing, oh. doing my thing and uh, this immigration lady came and helped me. <laughs> but, oh. <laughs> but yeah, it was really, it was quite funny. I was having these moments of, um, you know, the Qantas ad and things, you know, yeah. flashing through my brain of Australia's <laughs> home and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, yeah it was quite funny. And so how long w did you come back during that time or were you away the whole time? Uh, we had a, we had a, a break, a, a five week break, mm -hmm. um, going from Montreal to Las Vegas. Um, our theatre wasn't quite ready yeah. for the cast to arrive um, and they had a, like a technical accident. Um, the stage had fallen. Right. Um, if, uh, if you know of the show Car, the- so That's the, the show you were in? Yeah, yeah. The, the stage floats it's wow. in a great abyss, they call it. Wow. And so it comes up and it pivots and it rotates all in this void, basically. Yeah. And the audience looks down into the void. Wow. Um, well, that stage on the side, the machine that makes <coughs> it go up and down had broken and so the whole thing had fallen. Right. So they were fixing Not that. Not ideal. <laughs> Not ideal for, no. <laughs> <laughs> for having the, the cast come yeah. and rehearse there. Yeah. So um, we had took five weeks off and I was able to come home yeah. in, that, in that time. and sort of come back to Geraldton for a, a, a little bit and then go back to Melbourne for a little bit and yeah. then fly back out yeah, right. um, wow. with my partner. Yeah, so yeah. that was good. 
Wow. Yeah. So, so you you went over to Montreal mm -hmm. to train, and how long were you in Montreal? We were in Montreal about three or three and a half months during the dead of winter. Wow. So it was minus forty something degrees at one point, <laughs> <laughs> and I'd never seen snow either at that point. Wow. So um, when we arrived, it was snowing and yeah. all white and just amazing, and I'd never. I don't want to see snow anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen enough? <laughs> it's, it's enough snow for my life. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. I mean, you, so you're in, you know, in the dead of winter, you're mm -hmm. in Montreal for like six months. Mm -hmm. Like, just how, like, I, I hear that and I think about what the kind of person I was when I was 21 and I, yeah. I would have probably just like collapsed and like fallen <laughs> apart. Like, how, how uh, did you cope? It was, f it was really great because, um, I, I just immersed myself in what I was doing. Yeah. You you live very close to the training centre, across the road, actually. So, um, and with all the other artists of all the other shows who are training at that time and people who are going into new roles and people who are injured, who are rehabilitating, yeah. um, are all in the same place. So, it's actually a really great little community and yeah. you have these, like, they do your party nights and all sorts of things inside the accommodation and yeah. stuff. So it was really, really fun for yeah. those it was like three or four months. Was it like a bit of a family exactly. for a lot of people, I guess, yeah. if you're all and in the same position? Exactly. And you're living with everyone else in your cast as well. So uh -huh. you become very close to your cast mates in yeah. that time because yeah. you're 24 hours a day with them. Yeah. So um, that really creates a bond. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine 24 hours a day, seven days a week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <a> four <laughs> months and months. <laughs> and when, when my partner and I arrived, we were actually the last to arrive out wow. of the entire cast of 80-something. Um, right. So a lot of them had already been there for nine months and, and we had just, just arrived. You were just trying to pick up. Yeah, so <laughs> we, we were kind of like the latecomers. Yeah. Yep. And so this show, was this the first time the show had been staged? Exactly, yeah. Right. So we were part of the creation of that show. Wow. Yeah. And so you did your training in Montreal. Mm -hmm. Did you have any input into the, I'm assuming it's called choreography? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The, the scene. Yep. Is it all choreographed for you? How does that work? No, so we, um, we choreographed the scene, yep. um, working with the other actors that are on stage with us. And we went through multiple different versions of the act. It would change constantly from day in, day out, um, maybe two or three times at one point, the whole scene would change. The mm. whole intention of the scene would change. Yeah, right. Um, we were working at 1.12 to 15 hours a day, wow. um, warming up, cooling down, warming up, cooling down. Um, and so when you say like, it like, was this during the show's run that it would change as well? No, no, this is before. before. Okay. This is in Montreal when yep. everything's being created. Yeah. Um, and then once we got to uh, Las Vegas, it was pretty set. Yeah. Um, at least the intention of the scene had been set, but the um, the choreography on the stage of where we went and what we did on stage was fluid. Yeah. Um, okay. And it it stays fluid. Yeah. Um, to ward off boredom. Yeah. Um, the scenes are constantly evolving yeah. to either be funnier or less funny or... And I guess, you know. like, any performer knows that when you've got an audience, that mm. some audiences react differently to some things. Exactly. And you play off that as well. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, and just different um, different things for the artists themselves. Yeah. Um, my acrobatic partner and I, because we played two roles, um, uh, crabs, in <laughs> contortion poses, we... Um, we're in a backbend, yeah, right. and the puppet that we were uh, wearing, um, the way that we moved would manipulate how the how the crab would uh, react. Yeah. So for us to do that, we we found that um, by talking or singing, it it helped us to breathe. Yeah, so right. um, we were talking to each other at one point. And we were singing along with the song saying, I'm a little sand crab, <laughs> as we popped up out of the sand. <laughs> and then I'd hear my partner go, I'm a little sand crab, at her part in the music. And then we would both like hop on to each other and um, yeah, continue to um, 
play the role. Yeah. And so it's like, I mean, sand. it's a big show and you're like, Huge. you're at the MGM Grand. I I MGM right? Grand, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, it's not just, you know, you're, yeah. it's, I mean, QPT is beautiful, but it's not, you know, a little QPT kind of thing. It's, yeah. It's a huge theatre, but yeah. you can still have fun with it. Oh, and totally. Play with it. Totally. Um, yeah. We did get in trouble a little bit um, <laughs> when we got a bit carried away and the note at the end of the day was um, could crabs keep it down a little bit because the first three rows can hear you <laughs> so <laughs> and that was being a bit bad because we were yeah. talking about what we would do later that night and where <laughs> we would go and things but, <laughs> but it's Las Vegas what did they expect to exactly happen? <laughs> exactly so they tried to reprimand us for talking and we said actually no it really helps us breathe mm. so other, otherwise we forget to breathe and yeah you don't want to pass out crab <laughs> so probably less than ideal <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um that was that was part of the, the yeah. role so yeah. and so you how long were you in Vegas so I was in Vegas for almost three years wow. uh, I did 970 shows in a row in a row. In a row. Um, yeah, so <laughs> that was quite amazing. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, my partner had to come home a year earlier than me. Yeah. She um, she couldn't she didn't like Vegas very much, so she came home and waited until I came back. Yeah. And then um, and then we resumed our career together. Yeah. When I got back, so. And yeah. w like in in Vegas, do you, where did you live? Uh, like, so do you live in a hotel? <laughs> no, lots of, actually lots of people ask us that. Even oh. when we were in Vegas, people go, oh, so what, what room are you in? Oh, wow. um, but no, we, we lived near the strip, but not on it. Yeah, okay. Um, in an apartment complex. Yeah. Uh, with a few other of our castmates as well. Oh, they all, uh, about 20 of us yeah. went into the same complex in twos. So yeah, it's a bit of a weird um, place, Vegas, isn't it? It's really weird. Like at that point, we were about 20 minute walk away from the strip and you could still feel the buzz of the neon like wow. and the radiation from the strip. It yeah. was kind of bizarre. Yeah. Uh, and then after my partner had left, uh, I moved about 20 minute drive away yeah. out by the, um, so Las Vegas is in a valley. Yep. Um, <coughs> so I lived just on the border of the hills. Um, yeah, so yeah. with a, a performer from O. Oh. So, uh, so there's more than one show on it? At the same yeah. time, yeah. So there were, at that point, there was about four or five different yeah. Cirque du Soleil shows in Las Vegas. Wow. And so um, not only are you part of your your cast, but there's other casts that you interact with. So yeah. it was um, it was a really great extended family. Yeah. And point. I suppose the scale, like the scale of something like that in Vegas, four or five shows, you just don't get that here in Australia, do you? No. No, not at all. And we're all playing two shows a night, five nights a week. Um, wow. <laughs> to our our audience, our seats were 1951. So there was 1,951 seats in our auditorium. Wow. Um, sure the so scale of that is unimaginable. Doing that <laughs> twice, a, twice a night, five nights a week, you think about the volume. Yeah. Constantly selling out yep. um, of people you, I don't even know how many people I, sh I did my shows to. So what you're saying is that millions of people have heard you say, I'm a little sand crab. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and then heard my, my comrades say, I'm a little sand crab too. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, like, you know it's a great brand. Put that on probably, your CV. probably think, did that crab just talk? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'd like to think that crabs can talk. But maybe that's a conversation for another time. Yeah. Um, so you came back to Australia after three years, 970 shows. Mm -hmm. I can't get over that. Mm -hmm. um, and where did you go from there? Uh, so I came home and um, I came back to Geraldton actually straight after my contract and re recovered basically yeah. <laughs> because I was quite tired. Um, the body was exhausted. Um, I came home and just rested for about a month, I think, yep. at that point, I think. And then I went back to Melbourne where my acrobatic partner was waiting um, and we resumed training together and living together and um, rekindling the bond. And then uh, I started teaching at <coughs> NICA. Yeah, right. Um, so where you'd studied yourself? Where I'd studied, I started teaching um, uh, just casually yeah. at first. Uh, and then I took some time uh, to go to Canberra while my partner went on a cruise boat yeah. uh, to, to entertain, not for a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> That's <So> clear. <laughs> yeah, just, just to make that clear, she, um, she did a lot of cruise contracts yeah. um, as an aerialist yeah. and in that time uh, either I would stay in our apartment and hold down the fort 
or when I went away, she would hold down the mm. apartment and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, but mostly we were together in Melbourne. Yeah. Um, so you I went to Canberra and danced again okay. in ballet and contemporary at a dance and aerial studio. Just like, so oh, I'll just go do a bit of ballet in my yeah. spare time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why not? Basically full time living yeah. with my, my uh, yeah. choreographer wow. and teacher. So that was kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe a bit different or quite Very similar. different. Yeah. Very okay. different. It, um, it really pushed me to come back to the circus. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes so. you need that reminder of the things that you love. Exactly. By not doing them. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. So I love dance, but circus is where my heart and soul is. So yeah. Yeah. So you talk a little bit about um, your partner. Well, you talk quite a lot mm -hmm. about your partner, I should mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. So what, it, like, and you talk about the bond that mm -hmm. you had. Yep, yep. W I, I, I'm just a real novice when it comes to circus. <laughs> so what, like, what is that? Why, why do you talk so much about that? Um, is it like a kind of a lifelong thing that people? It, it is in, in a way, yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we did an aerial act, so. Um, our lives are basically held in each other's hands at that point. Um, so uh, it's it is it's quite a interesting bond you, yeah. you gain over over time. And we worked together for about eleven years, so yeah. it was quite a long long stint. And we've uh, competed internationally and done a lot of a um, lot of festivals and things. Yeah. So yeah, we we gained a lot of uh, acclaim. I yeah. guess. Yeah, together. So she was a big part of my career. So it's hard not to talk about who she was yeah. and what she did. So yeah. Yeah. And so you you did eventually leave Canberra and Melbourne mm -hmm. and came back here to Geraldton. Yeah. Yep. And so how long have you been back here now? So I've been back uh, just on uh, four years. Right. Uh, coming up, I think. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So was it uh, like a what kind of change was it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I kind of know um, the answer, but so uh, <laughs> after I after I did Canberra, I went back to Melbourne and worked full-time then yep. in the bachelor program uh, teaching and that was very stressful um, so I was responsible for my students safety and welfare while at the same time pushing them to be the best that they possibly could be yep. um, and I created some very very strong aerialists in that time and um, unique apparatus mm. and things like that people had never seen students doing and things so um, I'd worked very hard to get some really great students pumped out of NICA, yeah. so that was really great. Um, and then I came home um, and I didn't realise how actually stressed I was. Yeah. Uh, once I got back here and just kind of went, oh, it's all good, you know, mm. I'm home and I'm home safe. And oh, it's windy. And, <laughs> and, it's, <laughs> and it's windy <laughs> and it's warm. Yeah. And, yep. and it's, when it's windy, it stays windy. <laughs> It doesn't suddenly doesn't decide it wants to be sunny and stop and then suddenly <laughs> decide to be rainy and like Melbourne. <laughs> like <laughs> Melbourne. Yeah. Or snow like Canberra. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's um, yeah. Melbourne's definitely four weathers in four seasons in one day. Yeah. Um, whereas here it's pretty good, yeah. you know, all the time. For about the first six months I was always saying every day to my mum, Oh, it's such beautiful weather here. You forget, don't you? Yeah. When you, go and you come back and you're like, oh, why do they ever leave? Exactly. <laughs> and the beaches, the beaches are so pristine and yep. so nice. And yeah. A lot so. different from Melbourne then. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah. So you've been back here four years now. Yeah. And where, like, where have you, what have you been doing with circus since you've been back? So I've been working at the PCYC, um, building the circus classes up there. Yeah. Um, and that's been going well. Uh, we've. It's, uh, we've been slowly building um, and we're getting to a point where we, we kind of want to expand a bit more yeah. and um, yeah, change, change it up a bit and yeah. get out into the local community a bit more and do some more interesting things within yeah, cool. the Geraldton community and beyond. Yeah. yeah, so is that your pitch to us? That yeah, you're gonna definitely. <laughs> recruit us yeah. all to be doing hula and handstands and stuff? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we offer a, ri a, a wide variety of, acrobat of um, uh, activities. Yeah. Um, but uh, mainly I'm an aerialist, so it's um, uh, aerial focused. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to talk to you for hours, but we probably should try and end it at some point. Yeah, but no I do worries. have one more question. Yep. If you could like plan what the circus culture in Geraldton would look like in five years, mm -hmm. what, what would it look like? Um, 
in five years, I would love to expand to have our own space, uh, our own building that offer um, community-based activities and classes for all age ranges and, and, and skill levels, um, possibly as a, a feeder into um, NICA's courses maybe. Um, yeah, to be uh, viable financially yeah. and, and yeah. socially viable. So you want to stay and I want to stay. <laughs> well, I have to stay. I have to stay. So you have to stay. Yeah. And well, you know, and then once yep. you've got the circus culture going, you can't leave. So exactly. Sorry. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, Melbourne. Sorry, um, yeah, Las it. Vegas. Yeah. We've got you now. It. Yeah. So. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's yeah. been a pleasure. It's an absolute yeah. pleasure. And I think right. we have maybe one more little. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've got my handstand prop demo. here. Yeah. I did remark earlier that I probably wouldn't even be able to stand on this, and I <laughs> and I stand by that. So. so I've got a little handstand prop here. Um, I'll just do a little elbow plunge. So I put my elbow into my hip. Yeah, that looks really easy. I think I could do that. Oh, look, one <laughs> hand. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so. And how long, but how long did it take you to learn that? That's my question. Uh, that was, uh, that's uh, basically a first year skill. <laughs> um, yeah, Maybe so it took me about <laughs> six months of first year training to, um, sort of get the idea of that balance. Well, when you start offering your classes, I will be your first student. Great. Awesome. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you very so much. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thanks.